Has your commitment to God ever cost you the approval of peers, the favor of employers, or the acceptance of family? If so, how did you respond? When we read today's passage from 1 Peter, we cannot fail to remember the many believers throughout the globe who still face significant hostility and repression for their faith, even as Peter's audience uh, was facing. And so we read from 1 Peter chapter 4, beginning at verse 12. Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal that is taking place among you to test you, as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice insofar as you are sharing Christ's sufferings, so that you may also be glad and shout for joy when his glory is revealed. If you are reviled for the name of Christ, you are blessed, because the spirit of glory, which is the spirit of God, is resting on you. But let none of you suffer as a murderer, a thief, a criminal, or even as a mischief maker. Yet if any of you suffers as a Christian, do not consider it a disgrace, but glorify God because you bear this name. For the time has come for judgment to begin with the household of God. If it begins with us, what will be the end for those who do not obey the gospel of God? And if it is hard for the righteous to be saved, what will become of the ungodly and the sinners? Therefore, let those suffering in accordance with God's will entrust themselves to a faithful creator while continuing to do good. Peter encourages Christians who face hostility for their faith to value their trial. Their current partnership in Jesus' suffering holds the sure promise of future partnership in Jesus' honor before God's court. Distancing themselves completely from both immoral activity and personal offensiveness, they are assured that the hostility is provoked by the world's hatred of the spirit of Christ that rests in the believer. In such cases, their suffering becomes gain. Society's opprobrium should not cause the believers shame and regret, but rather it should encourage them to praise the God who is preparing them for glory. What then does Peter say here to believers who do not live under a repressive regime or under repressive circumstances? We are still to seek to host within us the spirit of glory and of God, and to become as transparent to the spirit of Christ as possible. We are called not only to live virtuous lives, but also to be gentle, respectful, and winsome in our dealings with all people. If we encounter resistance, we must discern whether it is due to some offense in us, or truly due to the worldly person's defiance of Christ in us. Even in countries tolerant of Christianity, individual Christians may suffer loss or hostility because they walk where Jesus leads. Perhaps one loses preferment at work because one refuses to sacrifice time reserved for family and worship. Perhaps one risks falling out of favor with friends or neighbors because one openly protests a policy that they might endorse, but that does not reflect God's kingdom values. In such cases, suffering should not dissuade us, but reinforce our commitment to pursue God's ways and uphold God's cause. And so we pray. Arm us, Lord to endure any trial for the sake of obedience to you and for the sake of witnessing to what you value. Amen. I would invite you, if you haven't already, to go a bit further thinking about our sisters and brothers who face persecution for their commitment to Christ. There are a number of organizations dedicated to connecting persecuted Christians with the spiritual, material, and sometimes even the legal assistance that they need to persevere in their faith and witness, and to know that the global family of God stands by them in their trials. 
These groups also do a great deal of work educating Christians in the West about the plight of their sisters and brothers in restrictive nations. You might consider just taking an hour or so just to browse uh, their websites and begin to get a sense both of the scope and nature of persecution of our fellow Christians and of the many ways in which you can stand alongside them. From regular prayer, to financial support, to signing petitions, and to raising awareness on their behalf yourself. I would especially point you to uh, these three organizations, Open Doors USA, which you can find at opendoorsusa.org, Voice of the Martyrs, which you can find at persecution.com, and Barnabas Fund or Barnabas Aid, which you can find at barnabasfund.org. Thank you for joining me again as we continue our uh, walk through First Peter, listening to his challenge to us today.